Hi, Keith here with another statistical video, this time looking at correlations in Minitab and showing some tricks and traps. Now the data I'm using this time is not real, it's invented, but it is based on real situations and real results obtained by one of my students. So the plots you'll see, the graphs you'll see, are very similar to graphs the student produced recently. So what am I looking at here? I am looking at, for example, a situation where we have a couple of environmental variables, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, measured for some different replicate water samples, for instance, at three different times of the year, the dry season, the wet season and the period in between, which in the wet dry tropics of Australia is often referred to as the build-up. Now, when we're looking at correlations, the first thing, the most natural thing to do is simply to calculate correlation coefficient. And that's easy enough in Minitab, stat, basic stats, down to correlation here and I can simply select all these variables and hit OK. And here is a table of results. Now, here 1, 2, 3 and 4 represent different scenarios. So what I'm interested in is N1 and P1. So the correlation there 0.93, P value is 0 0.000, so that's highly significant correlation and a 0.9 is quite strong. Um, N2 and P2, 0.7, again P value is triple zero, so significant, not as strong as the first correlation. Third, N3 and P3, nitrogen and phosphorus scenario 3, again a very strong correlation, nearly 1.0 here and highly significant. And lastly, N4 and P4, again, very strong and highly significant. So in these three scenarios, we have three highly significant correlations, and these are very strong and infected. 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9, they're all essentially the same in terms of the strength of the correlation. The one that stands out a bit is N2 and P2 with a correlation of 0.7, suggesting that relationship, although significant, is not quite as strong. Now this is where we need to start being careful. One thing we have in the data here is observations measured at three different times, and it's quite possible that the relationship changes in some way over those three times, and we need to examine that. So to look at the relationship, we can go to scatter plot here, and let's start by looking at P1 and N1. And here we go. Ah, well, that all looks fine. We've just got a scatter point that looks like a fairly straight relationship, um, and the scatter of points there is about what we'd expect for a correlation of 0.9, fairly strong. But what we haven't done here is actually separate out any influence of those seasonal changes. So we need to do something a little bit more sophisticated. So back to graph and scatter plot. And this time I'm going to go over here with regression and groups. I could just use with groups, but I'm going to put the line on just to make the point a little bit stronger. OK. So let's do that same one again. P1 and N1, and we'll select season as the categorical or grouping variable. I won't change anything else. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Okay, well, this really doesn't change our interpretation in the result. There's not much evidence of the seasonal change here. The points are just scattered all around, um, and the difference in the little the slope of these lines and their position 
is well within the margin of error here. I could test that by doing the appropriate analysis of covariance, but I don't think there's a need to. Um, what about the other scenarios? So let's go through them. I've already drawn the graphs. P2 versus N2. Now this one you'll remember is the case where the correlation was only about 0.7 weaker than any of the others. The graph here immediately reveals what's going on. There's a strong seasonal difference in the relationship. The nature of the relationship doesn't really appear to change. The slope of the line is the same, but it increases as we go from the dry season through to the wet season. And the lower correlation, the 0.7, is coming around because I'm just looking at this as one set of points, whereas I should really be looking at it as three separate relationships. I should be looking at the seasons individually, and I'll come back at the end to show how to do that with correlations. All right, let's look at the other scenarios, P3 versus N3. Well, here, again, we've got a seasonal change, but in this case, it's not a change in the nature of relationship. There's an overall shift to higher values of both N and P as we go through the seasons. The slope of these three lines is about the same and the scatter is about the same. And that's why with this scenario, we get a very high correlation, 0.9, similar to the correlation we get with the first scenario where there's actually no seasonal difference. Okay, final scenario here. Now this one has a slightly less strong, slightly weaker relationship than the last one. And that's because it's the same sort of situation where there's an increase in nitrogen and phosphorus. It also has the same slope for the line in the three seasons, but there's something else going on because there's a shift vertically in the relationship as we go from season to season. So this scenario number four is really a combination of scenarios two and three. And so you can see here with just three seasons and two variables we can get a whole lot of different things going on and we need to look in detail at the scatter plot for the different times or different locations in order to see really what the whole story is. And as I said at the start, this is not real data, but my student had graphs for all of these scenarios. So different sets of variables revealed these different scenarios. I've done it here with all the same. Back to the data. Now I said there is a way I can look at the seasons and look at the correlation for each season individually. And there's two ways to do that. A rather slow way is to actually break out a separate data sheet for each season or to use the select rules to select particular cases. There's a quicker way. Let's go Control L to bring up the command line editor or if you don't want to do that over here, editor, command line editor. And if I type in this command that you can see here, correlation variable one through two, variable four, semicolon by season, full stop. Submit commands. So what does this do? Oops, try that again. There we go. This does a correlation table for each season. And if we do this, we can see 0 0.972, 0 0.97.2, 0 0.972, the correlations are identical for all four scenarios. For the build-up, the dry season, 0.876 for all, and the wet season, 0.941 for all. And that's because I used the same underlying data, but just added in increments of change. So all the correlations come out the same. 
OK, I hope this illustrates the reason that you need to look in detail at relationships using scatter plots and not rely simply on overall correlation coefficients. And I hope this gives you a couple of tips or a couple of tricks in how to do that in Minitab.